The government has accepted more needs to be done to get personal protective equipment to health workers treating coronavirus patients. A large consignment of personal protective equipment, including 400,000 gowns, is due to arrive in the UK from Turkey tomorrow. Last night, Public Health England issued advice suggesting health workers should either substitute or reuse some personal equipment that's in short supply. But some unions today claim doctors and nurses are losing faith in the government's response. The Department of Health insisted the advice was in line with guidance from the World Health Organization. Now, all this comes as new figures show more than 15,000 people have now died in the UK with coronavirus. The latest official figures show there were 888 deaths reported in hospitals in the last 24-hour period. That brings the total number then of people who have died in the UK to 15,464. That number doesn't include deaths in care homes or in the community in England and Northern Ireland. With more then, here's our health correspondent, Dominic Hughes. John Coker, a detective constable for British Transport Police who leaves a wife and three children. Retired paediatrician Judith Darmady, founder of a children's charity awarded an OBE who dedicated her life to the care of others. Two of more than 15,000 deaths caused by COVID-19. It's hitting families across the country but the really sad thing for people is when someone dies they are dying alone they are probably scared and their family are not able to console them not able to know how it happens and you know after all this is over there are going to be many stories required to be told by nhs staff who were the last people with loved ones as they died more lives are being saved than lost, but medical staff are worried they're being put at risk because of a continuing shortage of personal protective equipment, PPE, especially gowns worn when treating the sickest patients. As hospitals face the possibility of running out of some kit, Public Health England changed its guidance. Some gowns could be reserved for the most high-risk procedures, or staff could reuse washable clothing. And today, a promise fresh supplies are on the way. 84 tonnes of equipment, including 400,000 gowns. We are trying to do everything we can to get the equipment that we need. We're trying to source more internationally. That is difficult at times. There is a great deal of demand for it, and the security of that supply can prove very challenging. Uh, but we are making progress there. But medical workers are anxious about Hi, where this leaves them. Hello, Dominic. Any doctor Nick Guntapali works directly with COVID-19 patients. Back on shift tomorrow, he doesn't know how much PPE will be available. There are apprehensions about what might there be, what might there not be, or how much has deteriorated and changed. And especially when we see the news reports now saying that, you know, stocks may be close to zero um, nationally, it is really worrying, um, especially being on the front line. And we have to do what we do. And um, it, it, it comes with the job. It would just be good if... Um, you know, we were adequately protected. The new guidance is in line with World Health Organization advice and hospital managers are facing a global shortage of PPE. We have to really focus on what we can do because there is a shortage of gowns. And in that situation, following World Health Organization guidelines has to be the way that we go. And they are saying, if other stocks aren't available, then this is the way to go and this is safe to use. The new guidance only applies when PPE stocks are running low and the picture across the UK is mixed, but the patience of healthcare workers is also in short supply. Well, let's pick up on some other points now uh, related, of course. Dominic joins us from Salford. Uh, Dominic, lots of questions around tests to see if people who've had the virus are now uh, have the antibodies and, and may now be immune. And a lot of debate in the past 24 hours after this senior uh, WHO official who questioned whether the presence of antibodies offers any immunity to infection. Can you just expand upon that for us? Well, okay. Kate, our bodies, we produce antibodies in response to infection. So the idea is that if you could detect, if you could make a test that could detect the antibodies produced by the COVID-19 infection, that could be a good way of seeing who has actually had this infection and they might have some immunity. And that could offer a way out of lockdown. If you can develop a test that shows those people who might be immune, they could then 
perhaps return to work or resume their lives. Now, that's very difficult to do in practice because these tests need to be massively sensitive. You can't have a test that gives too many false positives or false negative results because that way disaster lies and that's why uh, these tests haven't yet actually come into being. None of them exist, at least not in a clinically proven way. And there are some of these tests elsewhere in the world, but here certainly then the question is if we could develop a test that was reliable, that would surely then, would it speed up the return to normality? Yes if, and this is quite a big if, the antibodies produced by COVID-19 do actually give some immunity. Now, for some infections, antibodies can offer protection for some time, sometimes years, but sometimes only months. And I think this is what the World Health Organization was driving at. The presence of antibodies in themselves don't offer someone automatic immunity because underlying all of this is the fact that this is a new virus. It's only been around for a few months, there is just so much that isn't known, including how antibodies may act and the level of protection they may offer for, against reinfection. Dominic, thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Now, there's more evidence tonight of the scale of the problem care homes are facing. According to one organisation representing not-for-profit care providers, deaths in one week were double those for the whole of the previous month. The National Care Forum says if the pattern seen in the homes that took part in its audit is repeated across all residential and nursing homes, then more than 4,000 older and disabled people will have died. That doesn't include residents who died in hospital from the virus. Here's our social affairs correspondent, Alison Holt. This is Green Hayes Care Home in Liverpool. In recent weeks, they've lost eight out of their 25 elderly and disabled residents. All the deaths are linked to COVID-19. It's a sign of the huge pressures care homes are under from the virus. Staff here found it spread rapidly. It was very unpredictable. So people would present with the virus in different ways. So we had some people that might um, be fine in the morning. Um, I can think of one example where um, there were a couple of people actually that were okay in the morning and then by the evening time they deteriorated so rapidly that it was end of life care. Green Haze is one of the homes that provided the data that lies behind today's report. Information collected by the National Care Forum found that by April the 13th there had been 299 deaths linked to COVID-19 in not-for-profit care homes looking after 30,000 residents in the UK. They calculate if that pattern is seen across all residential and nursing homes, then there could have been more than 4,000 coronavirus-linked deaths, most of which are not yet reflected in official figures. Once residents who died in hospital are included, they say the number will be considerably higher. Clearly the concern is that if we don't make some important changes now, if we don't focus on social care and give it the resource and attention that it needs, then those figures could increase um, and uh, we could be talking again about this next, next week uh, with even higher levels of deaths within homes. The government has set out an action plan for social care and says it's working round the clock to provide the support and equipment that care staff need. Lovely, well done. And then the other sleeve as well. But some homes have taken matters into their own hands. Pull that down. Are they on top of your glasses? At this Derbyshire care home, residents are helping staff make their own protective equipment. They're virus free and want to keep it that way. We're in our war of this time. And we do what we have to do to uh, battle on. We've got our trousers on ready that we've made out of curtain lining. One small sign of the determination in such homes to protect the people they care for. Alison Holt, BBC News.